Daniel here for Tabletop for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through Apiary. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of Apiary, designed by Connie Vogelman and published by Stonemeyer Games. And the solo mode is done by the Automa Factory. Now, I pre-ordered this game, and I don't have any relationship with uh, Stonemaier Games, so take that into consideration. But Apiary is a game uh, of space bees. The uh, bees have a, a higher intelligence, they've evolved, and they've moved on to space, and they're exploring space, trying to find pollen and fiber and water and, and other things. And this is a worker placement kind of game where you place your worker bees out on the board, doing various actions, trying to build out your hive and score the most points by the end of the game. Now there is a solo mode with an AI that you're gonna operate and it's a fairly streamlined AI for that matter. And it's gonna compete with you for uh, tiles and spots on the board and other things as well. So with that in mind, let's go into setup. Now to set up the game, we're first gonna set up the main board here. So we just place out the board like so. You'll shuffle the seed deck and place it right here. You'll shuffle each of the stacks of tiles. We have the farms, the recruits, and the development tiles. You'll place them all in their appropriate stack on the right here. Then you'll draw three of each of these tiles to the offering. You also shuffle the carving deck, and you're gonna draw six of these to this offering here. You'll only use six per game. The rest of them can go back to the box. And then shuffle up the dance tiles and draw two of them and place them in the display right here. And then you'll place a stack of dance tokens right here and they're all face up because you, you can access any one of them. And then last, we're gonna populate the exploration area. Now, normally you would just place out tokens. That's what the, uh, the book says, but I would advise you to just go ahead and place out all the planet tiles like so, because what it does is it makes it just one less thing that you have to place later on. The, the rule book actually says to keep this off the side and draw one each time you explore, but this saves a step later. And then you're gonna take your tokens here and put them all face up. These are the explore tokens. And then you'll place your space bee right here. Now I haven't painted this bee yet, but I'm going to. I just haven't had the time for that yet. And then for the player setup, you're gonna draw one of the faction mats at random. So I got the log. And then you'll gain uh, one of your docking mats. I'll set that right here. And then you'll shuffle the faction tiles and draw two. Now I've drawn Cini or Cini and uh, Sekro, I think. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but uh, these are the two faction tiles that I've drawn here. And so they provide different resources to start with and different uh, bonuses. So these have end game bonuses of gaining points per particular tiles or tiles adjacent. So this one wants the development tiles adjacent to it. This one wants a bunch of the recruit tiles in the, in the hive. And so you choose between the two of what you want. Now, one thing to note, is if you gain one like this where it shows the resource here, you so you gain resources for the circles in the green, but then the ones that show two different resources, it's the one that's highlighted in white. So keep that in mind, that's what you get. Now, I actually think I want this one here. Sekro, I think is kind of nice. Um, uh, here we go, start of game. Uh, I had it on its wrong side. Make sure you have it on its right side. The rule book actually says that. Uh, start of game. I get to build two face-up uh, recruits for free. So that's kind of nice. Now I don't start with any resources with this one, but that's okay. And so what it also tells you is what workers you start with. And this one shows a two and a one worker. So I only start with two workers to, to start with. And so it tells you on here where to place your faction tile and you, you place it face up in this direction like so. Then you add your workers to your active pool here. It shows at the top of your docking mat. Now you'll notice, I actually have the numbers painted on these. I, I painted these ahead of time because it's just easier for me to read them. So uh, don't be surprised when you open your box and you find your numbers are not painted. They don't, they don't come painted. <laughs> and then you'll take your seven hibernation tokens and one of your wooden tokens, place it on the board. And then your two other wooden tokens, you're gonna have one go on the queen's favor, which is this track down at the very bottom here. 
and it goes on this zero spot. And then your other one is going to go in the number two uh, spot on the score track because you're going to be the second player. The AI starts first. The rest of the Bs that you have, you'll just have these off to the side. You'll be gaining these later on, most likely. <laughs> and now we're going to set up for the AI. Now, I actually put the AI's uh, docking mat onto the board here. But before you do, you actually have to decide which of the difficulty levels you're going to choose. See, on here, we have the difficulty levels of one, two, three, four, five, six. But if you go to the expert mode, which is five or six, you'll actually use the other side of the docking mat. So keep that in mind, it shows expert here. But I'm gonna do normal mode, and I'm gonna do level four. Now level four difficulty says they start with three, two, and two gray workers, and then three, two yellow workers. And when they gain worker strength, they are gonna gain three. And so the AI is gonna gain three gray workers and two yellow workers. Now they always have three gray and two yellow, and they're never gonna have more than that or less than that. So keep that in mind. And then you're gonna take this token here, this little token that has the three or the two. This is the token that reminds you that when they, they gain a worker, this is the strength they start at. So on level four, they're gonna be gaining the three strength when they gain a new worker. Then you have the AI's hibernation tokens. You'll just place that on their mat. And then their score marker, again, is gonna go in the number one spot because they're gonna start first. And then the last thing you do is shuffle up the AI's Automa deck here, and we're gonna place it right down here. All right, in the last part of setup, I have a start of game ability here that says build two face up recruits for free. Recruits are the ones with the little B symbol on the right, the blue ones. And so I'll take this one here, which improves my advance action by discounting it by the cost of one pollen. And I will place it, I think, right here, which will gain me one water, adding it to my board. When you gain resources, you're gonna place them on any available slots that are printed on here that show that resource on it. And then the second one here, this one says whenever I build a farm adjacent to this tile, I'll gain one point. And I think I'll place this one up here, gaining a level one worker to my pool. And so that'll be useful later. Then these are gonna get slid down and we're gonna draw two new ones to the display here. And let's see what we got, very good. All right, and so that's it for setup. And so before we talk about how the game plays, let's talk about how you score points in this game because you're trying to score the most points. You're trying to beat out the AI. The AI is gonna be scoring points in a different way than you. But the way you score up points is by filling out the mat, your starting mat, all the printed spaces on it. If you fill that out, you'll gain eight points at the end of the game. If you fill any of these frames, I'll show you this during the grow action, but you can gain these frames, adding them to your board, just slot them in like so. When you fill those out, you'll gain eight points at the end of the game for those as well. You'll also gain points for any of your built tiles that show points on the far left here. So this one shows one point on the far left. Most of them are one point, some of them are two, some of them are zero, and there's even a few threes there. And then you'll gain points for meeting conditions based on your carvings. Your carvings have different conditions printed at the top here. Like this one says gain 14 points if you have no frames. And so you gain those points at the end of the game. You can gain most of your points with carvings if you're really good at it. And then meeting conditions of planted cards. Some of the cards allow you to plant the cards, you know, sliding them in right here where it says seed card. And you'll gain the end game points printed on here if you meet those conditions. This one says two points per placed worker at the end of the game. And one of the other spots where you're going to gain points is this Queen's Favor track. You'll gain points based on the, where your, your marker is. So if it's at the 14 spot here, you'll gain seven points at the end of the game. Or if it's at the 25 spot, you'll gain 25 points. And then sometimes you'll have a faction ability, like if I upgrade this faction, on the other side it says I gain two points for every recruit tile in my colony. Those are the blue tiles, so I'll definitely want to look at doing that. And then last but not least, you'll gain points for having majority of hibernation tokens in the different honeycombs down here. We only use the two honeycombs here. This one's only used for three player. So if I have majority in this one and this one, I could get seven and three points. But if I have uh, the minority in the, the hibernation comb here, I'll get two points. And if I don't have the majority here, I'll get nothing. So that's how you get points. That's the majority of points. You, you can gain points during the, the game through other actions, and you'll see those as I play. And the game will end when the hibernation areas are filled up, and each player has one more turn. 
And so on your turn, you're going to be able to do one of two things. You can either place a worker out onto the board, or you can do a retrieval. When you place that worker out on the board, you can choose one of the six areas to go. We have research, grow, explore, advance, carve, and convert. And so let's start with research here. When you place a worker on research, let's say we place this level four worker here. What you're gonna do, it tells you on each of these actions what they do, but this one says draw X cards and keep one, discard the rest. The X is the number of your worker. So if I used a four worker here, I would draw four cards and then keep one of those discarding the rest. But then it also tells you on all these areas except the carve that there's a bonus for placing the level four worker there. So this one says also plant a card. So you can plant a card from your hand or the one you just drew, it's up to you. But when you plant a card, you're gonna slot it in in one of these seed card areas here. And so that gives you the opportunity to score end game points uh, with this particular card if you meet the conditions. Now you only start out with two slots available, but later on as you add frames to your board, they're gonna unlock these other slots as well, one per frame. Now these cards here themselves offer different abilities. Often they're very powerful abilities. This one in particular says discard any tile from your hive to gain three points. But also at any point you can discard a card to pay one basic resource cost when you're doing actions. So these cards can be very useful. Next we have the grow action. The grow action lets you gain level one workers or gain frames to your board. But if you place a level four worker here, you're also able to upgrade your faction tile, flipping it over to its upgraded side. Now, when you're gaining workers or doing the, the frames, you're using the amount of strength you have for your, from your worker and resources. And so you spend the strength like a currency and also the resources that you might have on your board to do the action. So for this one here, for each level one worker you gain, you have to spend one strength and one pollen. And for each frame you gain, you have to spend two of any basic resource, the pollen, the fiber, and water. And they can be two different basic resources and uh, two strength to, to gain one of those frames. And so what you can do is you can do the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, like if I use this level four, four worker, I could buy two frames if I wanted to, assuming I had enough resources, or I could buy uh, workers, assuming I had space. You can only ever have four total active workers. And of course, that's also indicated by the fact that there are only four workers of each color for each player. So keep that in mind. But with a level four worker, you could also buy two workers and one frame depending on if you have the resources to do so. And now I want to talk about the convert action. The convert action is very cool, especially if you use a level four worker. When you place a level four worker, it tells you first teach a dance. When you teach a dance, you're going to choose one of the two dance tiles here, and then you're going to fill in the blank spots with tokens from the stack here. So for instance, this dance of blank and blank for knowledge lets you place, let's say we decided um, how about a fiber and a queen's favor? And so what it lets you do is it lets you pay one queen's favor and one fiber to gain two points and a seed card. Or this one down here, dance of the future for honey. So you could spend one point to gain honey and you can go down to zero points. You start out at two points, so you could do this twice if you wanted to. Now you can only do as many conversions as you have the strength of your worker, but you can all, you can do any kind of conversions you want, as many of them as you want according to your total strength. And you can do the same ones or different ones, it's totally up to you. These ones here are pretty straightforward. This lets you discard a seed card to gain a new seed card, draw one from the deck. This lets you change a basic resource for a basic resource. You can give a pollen and a fiber for a wax, or two pollen and a water for a honey. And so that's how that works. Now, one thing I failed to mention is in the solo mode, when you teach a dance, you automatically get four favor. See, in the multiplayer mode, when somebody uses your dance that you've made, you would mark it with a little wooden cube here, then you would gain a favor when somebody else uses it. But since the AI in the solo mode never uses the convert action itself, uh, you gain that bonus of four queens favor automatically. Now you can only teach one dance, so keep that in mind. So you only get that bonus once, but uh, there are some good options for dances. I, I tend to use the dance almost every game, and I probably will use it during this one as well. All right, so the next action I wanna talk about is the explorer action. When you place a worker to do the explorer action, you actually add the two workers there 
if there are two, into a total amount. So there's a four and a two here, so that'd be six. And what it lets you do is move the queen ship up to that many spaces uh, on the board. And wherever you land, you're going to explore that planet. So uh, you don't get to gather up all the tokens that you move through. You only get to gather the one up that you land on. So if you land on one of the face down planets, you're going to take the token that's on it, gaining the bonus right away, adding the token onto your faction mat in the little circle area here. And then you're going to flip over the planet and you're going to add a resource to the planet and then gain all the resources that are shown there. On top of that, if it's a level four worker that you placed, you're gonna get the level four benefit as well. So I'm gonna show you a couple different uh, planets to give you an idea of how that works. So this one here shows a fiber. And so when you place the queen there, you'll add one, only one resource to an empty space. So in this case, you wouldn't add two. So you'd add an empty resource. It's any basic resource, so fiber, water, or pollen and you'll add it here and then you'll gain the resources shown. So let's say I added a pollen here, then I would gain a fiber and a pollen from that explorer action. But one of the other ones is like this one here, Zingy, lets you do a level four action if you placed a level four worker when you did the explorer action. So this one says teach one dance and use it twice. So that's really cool. So if I hadn't taught a dance yet, I could use this, teach a dance, use it twice, so I get a huge benefit just from using that action. So that's really cool. There's a whole bunch of other actions in the planets there. So that just gives you an idea. Now we have the carve action here. The carve action lets you buy one of these tiles here. You have to have a level four worker to go here, but this one is uh, pretty cool because a lot of your end game points are gonna come from here. Now, when you buy a tile, you're gonna pay the printed resource shown at the very bottom. This one shows two honey as a printed resource. And then you're gonna place it onto your faction area in a spot that's adjacent to a previously placed tile. So I could go here, 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 or here. When you place the tile, of course, like I had shown earlier, you're gonna gain the bonus that's shown underneath if there is any. Now, the carving tokens themselves only gave a bonus at the end of the game because they give end game victory points. This one in particular says gain 14 if you have no frames. I probably won't use that. I'm probably gonna get a lot of frames. Some of these others are like the, the mausoleum here wants you to have a bunch of dead workers. It says gain 12 points if you only have zero or one active worker at the end of the game. This one says two points for every active worker, four points for every seed, uh, four points for every honey you have left over, and then this last one here is three points per adjacent tile, including faction tiles. That brings up a point. A faction tile here, notice this says faction tiles. Uh, this actually counts as three different tiles. So keep that in mind. So any of the factions that say gain points next to this particular tile, it's talking about this tile here, not these, not the whole thing. So keep that in mind. So if I got that one, I'd probably want to place it like over here so that it's next to two of my faction tiles. And that would be worth six points right off the bat. So that's how those work. All right, so I saved the best for last. We're going to talk about the advance action. Now the advance action, what you're going to do when you place a worker here is you're going to add the total here and it's going to tell you what access you have to the various tiles to purchase. So you'll see at the top of the columns there, there's two plus, three plus, and five plus. And so you'll want to aim for that range if you're going for a particular tile. Now with this particular placement here, I have six total power because you add the two Bs together. If there is no B here, you're just adding one. So either way, I'm being able to choose from all three of these columns here. Now, of course, these all have various costs. Farms usually cost fiber and water. Recruits always cost pollen. And then developments always cost wax. Now you're only able to buy one tile uh, when you go to the advance action. If you use a level four worker going here, you can gain three extra points. Now when you take a tile, of course, you're gonna you know, buy a tile, pay the resources, place it on your board, do all that. And then at the end of your turn, you'll shift all the tiles down and refill the empty spots. And so let's talk about what these tiles do. The farm tiles, provide additional storage for resources, allowing you to have resources on your board. Now, when you gain resources and add them to your board, if you ever have any excess resources that don't fit, at the end of your turn, you'll discard those for queen's favor for each one. 
but otherwise you'll place them in the storage. So this one here lets you store honey, these let you store pollen or fiber, and those let you store water. But also the farm tiles serve as income when you do the retrieval action, and that'll make more sense when I talk about it. But at the very top here, the little arrows here uh, talk about a retrieval action, or the income action, sorry. And so this one here grants three queen's favor, this one grants a wax, or this one grants a water and a queen's favor. Now the advanced action gives you like augmented abilities. So this one here, when you do the convert action, again, the convert is trading resources, it actually discounts the trades for the wax or the honey by one pollen. So that's kind of cool. This one says whenever you gain a frame, gain also a seed card. That's really cool. And this one says whenever you uh, gain a farm, trigger its, uh, its income. That one's really nice. I really like that one. So I may have to go for that one. The development cards here give an instant one-time ability. And so this one here, it says gain two explore tokens. You'll take two off of the, the explore section there. This one gives you four queen's favor. And this last one lets you recollect from one of your explore tokens. So if I had already taken this particular explore token, adding it to my faction mat, I could later then gain this particular development and it'll let me recollect one of my uh, explore tokens gaining that bonus. All right, so let's talk about worker bumping. See in Apiary, there's this really interesting mechanic where you bump workers from uh, worker placement spots. So nothing's actually ever blocked. So when you place a worker and there's already a worker in this top spot on the advanced spot, you'll bump it down. So this worker will go in the top spot, this one gets bumped down. On the explorer, it goes from left to right following that arrow there. And so that's what happens there. But then later on, if something comes along and decides to bump it again, then it's gonna bump the top one into the bottom one, the bottom one gets bumped off completely. <laughs> and so when a worker gets bumped off, it gets returned to the faction mat, sorry, the docking mat. And so when it goes to the docking mat, you're gonna choose to uh, either put it in your active pool or landing area, except for if it's a level four worker. If it's a level four worker, it dies, it automatically hibernates. And uh, well, I'll talk about hibernation in just a moment. But if it's any other amount, let's say if it was a one, it would increase to a two if it goes to the active pool or it wouldn't increase at all if it goes to the landing area. And I'll explain in just a moment during worker retrieval why you would want to use the landing area. Now, if you bump a worker from any of the bottom four actions here, the convert, carve, grow, and research, those workers would automatically get returned to the docking mats, unless of course it's a level four worker which would hibernate right away. Now the other way that you get workers back is you do the retrieval action instead of placing a worker out on the board. So you spend your whole, uh, your whole turn doing a retrieval action. You take all the bees that are on the board that are yours and any from the landing area and bring them back to the active pool. You're gonna increase their power by one. And so again, if it's a level four worker, it automatically hibernates, but the rest of them will come back to the active pool. And so in this case here, we would return these three workers, increasing them all by one. So now I would have a three, three, and a two. And then what we would do is we trigger our income. And that's where your farms come into play. So let's say I had these two farms here and I retrieve those three workers, then I would gain up to three incomes. However, it has to be unique farms for each income. So B has to go to a different farm. And so in this case here, I only have two farms, but three bees came back. So I'd only get two incomes, both of these here. But let's say I retrieved one worker and only had these two farms here. Then I would have to choose between those two, which of those incomes I would get. And you just gain those resources. Again, during this action, if you gain too many resources that you can fit on your board, then uh, any leftover resources will get discarded and you'll gain queen's favor instead. So the retrieval action can be very powerful if you have a lot of farms that give you a lot of income. All right, and so that is the gist of the player's turn. Now let's talk about the AI's turn. So the AI has a variety of actions that it's gonna do. And when it does its actions, you're gonna take the card, you know, flip over the top card of the AI's deck, placing it next to the deck itself. On the deck card in here, it's gonna tell you priorities and colors. And so the first thing it tells you is what kind of color worker it's gonna choose and, and how it's gonna determine its action. So you'll see on this card here, it shows a gray slash yellow worker. And so this is just telling you, use the color that's shown on the left side here. So in this case here, it wants to use a yellow worker. So this top action here is asking, does it have zero or one 
workers. If it does, then you're going to retrieve all the workers from the AI, again, increasing their value or hibernating as necessary. And then the AI will gain two points. If it does this first action, it ends its turn. If it doesn't do this action, it'll go on to the next one. If, if it does this action, it'll end its turn. If not, it'll move on to the bottom action, which is this whole area here. Now, if it does the second action, the carve action, when it places a level four worker there, of course, it'll bump anything that's already there, but it's gonna do the carve action. See, the carve action here is it's gonna choose a tile based on the number here. It's gonna move that many spaces following this particular design. This is a little S curve here. But there's a picture inside the manual to show you how it works. But basically you start with the tail of this arrow. So the tail's the very bottom right. So this is number one. And you'll count up following the S like this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then back. Now, if for some reason, let's say this one was taken, this would not count, it would skip the empty space. So it would go one here and it would take this one instead. So that's how that works. Of course, if let's say the count was three and we were missing this one here, it'd go one, skip this, two, and then three, and it would take that tile. That's how that works. Now at the very bottom here, we have the research action. And so if it does the research action, depending on the strength of the uh, AI's worker that it places, it's gonna gain points. So it's, if it's one, two, or three, it'll gain one, two, or three points. If it's a level four worker, it'll gain six points. If you're on expert mode, it'll gain an additional point here. The same goes for the convert and the grow action. All three of those actions does the same exact thing. It's just gonna gain one, two, or three points, or six points for a four worker. So that's how those four actions work. So let's talk about the explore action. So the explore action here, what it does is it follows the S curve again. Now the AI is going to move a number of spaces based off of the, the level of the worker that it places. And so let's say it placed this level four worker up here and there was no other worker there. And then it would move a total of four spaces, but it'll stop at the first planet that has an explore token. Again, you're gonna follow uh, this S curve, but the way the S curve works on this one is you look at the way the arrow is pointing, so it's pointing to the left. And so this one here, it moves up and to the left. So that's where you're gonna start. So you're gonna start going left and then up and then do the S like that. So in this case here, it'll go this way, like so, all the way up to here. If it gets to the very top corner and can't move up anymore, it'll, it'll turn around and you can turn around the card to show which direction it's gonna go on its way back down. Now in this case here, if it placed the level four worker, it would move up to four spaces, but it's gonna stop at this first space and explore this particular tile. And so when, when the AI explores, it takes the token, it doesn't gain the bonus off the token, you just put the token on the uh, AI's mat. This will count as three points at the end of the game for each token that it has. And then it'll flip over the planet tile, adding a resource to that planet based on the, what the card says. And the card here says a pollen. So it would add a pollen to this tile. Now, if it does a level four, it'll do a second explorer action following the same path uh, using the rest of its strength uh, until it hits another explore token. So in this case here, if it was placing it like this, it would explore this one first, then this one, gaining both of these tokens, adding resources to both of the planets shown. And so that's how that works. And so the last one is called the advanced action for the AI. And so the advanced action is really straightforward. All right, you're gonna place the, the worker in the top spot, again, bumping workers as necessary. And it doesn't add up the total here for the advanced action. It only cares about what strength it places. So it places a level three here, and you just follow the chart at the bottom. It's gonna gain a farm and a development. So it'll gain the leftmost farm and development, adding it to its supply. You'll notice here on the faction map, there's actually slots in the, the top here to slot them in to count them later. I actually keep them off the screen for the game, uh, but that's where you would place them if you wanted to, to, to count them up later. They're just worth points at the end of the game. So it really doesn't matter if you place them there or somewhere else, but it would take the two leftmost, adding it to its supply. And then the middle of those same kinds of tiles, it'll discard those. And then it'll shift down the rest of the tiles 
and refill in those empty spaces. And that's it, that's it for the advance. And so the AI's turn is actually quite, you know, straightforward, easy to run. There's not a lot to think about when it comes to the AI. And uh, I hope uh, you'll see how that goes as we play the game. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is when the AI hibernates. This can be just slightly confusing, but basically it's going to pick the uh, hibernation comb either the five one or the three one, where it's gonna gain the most points if it scores in that moment. So if, it, if it's empty like this, it's gonna look at this, the one that would gain it the most points after placement if it was scored in that moment would be this one here because this one gives seven points for majority. Nobody's there yet, so if it places a token, now it has majority. If it was scored at that moment, it would be seven points. Now on this five one here, it places left to right. On this three one here, it starts with the top one here, and then this left one, and then the right one here. Now, if we were going along here, and I had placed a hibernation token here, then the next time the AI places a hibernation token, it would choose between these two. Now, the ties are always broken in favor of the one with five slots, but again, we're gonna evaluate how many points it would gain by the placement if it was scored in that moment. I know it sounds kind of confusing, it makes sense as you go, and you'll see it as we play. All right, so we're ready to get started here, and it's the AI's turn first. So we flip over the top card here. It's gonna use the gray workers first. The top here says to check to see if there are zero gray workers. Well, he has all his gray workers. So we'll move on to the next one to check to see if there's a level four worker. There is not. So he's gonna go to the explorer action. And the AI is gonna use its highest level worker of that particular color. Again, the color shown on the left side of the card. So it's using a level three uh, worker and it's gonna place it up here. There's no other workers up here. So that's total value three. So it'll move up to three spaces. Now again, we're following this S curve here. And so this S curve says to turn this to the right and we're gonna try and make our way down. Well, there's nothing down. So it can't do that. So it'll turn around and work its way to the left now. And so it'll move up to three spaces. Again, stopping at the first available Explorer token, which is this first space here. So it's gonna take this Explorer token, adding it to its supply here. And then we're gonna flip over this planet. This planet shows three empty spaces. The AI will add a resource to that planet, matching this particular card, which shows a pollen here. And so we'll add it right here. And that's it for the AI's turn. Now it's my turn and let's see, what do I wanna do? I think I too will use the explorer action. I'll use one of my level one workers to go to that action there. Now I can go up to four spaces and so I can go to any of those tiles if I wanted to. Again, I only get the explore token from the tile I land on. But I think I'll go to this first one here because I wanna gain this wax. So we'll go to this tile here. Now this tile here shows a wild resource and one empty space. I'll be able to add one uh, resource to that spot. So let's see, first of all, I'm gonna gain this wax and we'll place my token right here. We'll gain the wax from the supply, adding it to my faction mat and one of the slots there that it can fit in. And then uh, let's see, I gain a wild resource and I can place a resource. I think I will place a fiber there. So I'll gain a fiber and then I'll gain the pollen as my wild resource. So I gain all the resources shown on that tile adding them over here to my supply areas here. Now it's the AI's turn. We're gonna flip a card over. Once again, it's doing the gray. It's looking for zero or one. It has two, so we skip that. The second action is blank, so we move on to the research action. So it's gonna take one of its level two workers here. Again, it'll choose the highest level worker. There's only level twos. It's gonna to go to the research action and again, with the research action, grow action, and conversion action, it's gaining points. So in this case here, it just gains two points. That's two for the two strength. And now it's my turn, and let's see. I kind of want to do, I want to do an advanced action. I want to build a farm. So we will spend my one worker here. And so now I have a combined total of two strength, which means I can only build this farm here, which is fine because it's the only one I can afford. This one's only one fiber and one water. This one's one fiber and two water. I could afford this one, but I wouldn't have had enough strength even if I put my two worker there to reach that column. So this is the only one I need. 
It's going to cost me one fiber and a, a one water. So we'll discard those first. And then I'll add this. Now I have this recruit here that says whenever I build a farm adjacent to it, I gain one point. So I definitely want to do that. So I'm going to build it in this spot here, which will gain me one fiber back, which is kind of nice. So we'll add that to my colony here. And then I will gain one point for that placement, moving my score marker up one space. Now that it's the end of my turn, we'll slide down the tiles here and refill that empty space like so. And now it's the AI's turn. And they're once again looking for a gray, but they're looking for zero gray. They still have one left. We're skipping over the carve because it's not a level four. We're going to grow. And so the AI is gonna grow and only gain two points. All right, so for my next turn, I have a two worker. So let's do that. I'll go here. Now I have a combined strength of three, so I can get from these two columns here. I just don't know what to get. I can't help but wonder if I should get this one here and gain some of those uh, explore tokens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is place it right here. I have to pay the one wax, but I'll gain a wild resource. I'm gonna gain a water. And so with that particular tile, you gain the explore tokens, but then you flip up the planets. And so I'm gonna gain this one here, flipping this planet up and let's see what we get. All right. Now you don't add a resource to that planet. I will gain two pollen for that placement, but I only have one spot for pollen. So this is gonna be one leftover pollen here. And then the next one I think I'll gain is this one here. I kind of want the water. I don't know if that's the best call, but that's what I'm gonna go with. So we'll gain the water, adding my token here, and then adding a water into my supply here. All right, now it's the AI's turn and they are looking for a yellow worker this time. They have a yellow three here. It's not a four, so we go on down to convert. Once again, they're gaining a bunch of points. So they're gonna convert for three points this time, moving them up to eight. All right, and so now it's my turn and I don't have any active workers in my pool, so I have to retrieve. So all of these workers are gonna go up one value. So two, two and a three, so that's not too bad. And then I get to trigger my income. I only have one farm, so that's all I'm gonna get, which is three of the uh, queen's favor. It's not horrible. I did forget to refill this tile. And that's the end of my turn. So now we go into the AI's turn. And let's see, they're looking for yellow again, looking for zero yellow. They still have one left. They're gonna go to the explore action one more time. So they're gonna explore up to five spaces, but you'll see they are once again going to the left, or sorry, the right this time. So they're gonna go right one space. There's nowhere else to go here. Turn around, so and then they still have four spaces left to go, two, three. They'll stop here and gain this token, flipping over this planet, see what it is. And they're gonna add a resource, they're gonna add a pollen to that planet. And of course they keep their explore token on their mat here. All right, so now it's my turn. I'm gonna go to the advanced action again. I wanna buy this farm here. This farm will cost me one fiber and two water. It gives me some more storage, so that'll be nice. And I'll be able to gain a level one worker from this placement and one point for building adjacent here. So I'll pay my resources here, add my worker here, and then gain one point. Now it's the AI's turn. And they're looking for zero gray workers. Yes, they have zero gray workers. So they're gonna retrieve all their workers and gain two points. So we'll add those two points first. And then all their workers are going up a level of, a, of strength here. So it's actually gonna have a level four gray worker. That's not good. I just noticed I forgot to discard this uh, pollen earlier. When you have excess resources, you discard it and gain one queen's favor. All right, so now it's my turn. My colony is getting kind of full right now. So I'm considering adding a faction tile. But before I do that, I think I will buy uh, one more uh, from the advanced. So we're gonna use my level one worker here and we're gonna buy this researcher because it's gonna give me a seed card anytime I buy a faction tile. So I definitely want this. It's gonna cost one pollen, except my diplomat here discounts the ad advance for recruits by one pollen. So this actually is free. I'll place it here. Now I, I have all my workers, so I can't gain a worker for this. So that bonus is forfeit, but that's okay. I'll be all right without that. And then we'll refill the tiles here. And now it's the AI's turn. And they're looking for zero yellow workers. That is correct. So they're gonna re, uh, retrieve their workers, increasing them both. So now they have a three and a four yellow worker. So it looks like they're gonna be using some four actions here pretty soon. All right, so now it's my turn. I am going to use 
the level two worker to go to the grow action. And since I needed two strength for buying a frame and two resources, I'll spend these two here. We'll buy a new frame and we're gonna add it up here next to these tiles here because I wanna add more farms up here for more points for this. At least I think that's what I'm gonna do, we'll see. Now it's the AI's turn. AI is looking for zero yellow workers. It, it has all its yellow workers. Now we're looking for a level four. It does have a level four worker, so it's gonna go to carve. And it's gonna carve for two. Looking at this S symbol with the tail end of it here, starting on the upper left. So it's gonna go one, two. Again, two is the amount here shown on the card. And so it'll take this one, adding it to its supply. Now each card token it takes is worth seven points at the end of the game. So that's how they get a lot of their points. Now it's back to my turn and I think I'm gonna do the explore action, my level three worker, moving three spaces, one, two, and three, landing on this planet here. And what it is, it's gonna give me a free seed card and then I'll get to add a resource and let's see, I think we'll gain a pollen. So I'll add that here and then we'll add one pollen to my supply here. I just realized I forgot to draw one of those seed cards for my uh, bonus here on the researcher. So now I have two seed cards. Let's check these out. So seed cards are really cool. Again, like, like I said, they give you powerful abilities. This one says pay one pollen to gain one level one worker, or this one lets me add plus one strength or minus one strength to one of my workers. So that's really cool. So I may want to be using that later, we'll see but they're also able to be used as resources instead. So we're gonna add these to my hand and I'll just place them right here. Now it's the AI's turn and they are looking for gray workers this time and they're gonna use their highest level worker. There's no carve action here, which is good for me, but they're gonna do the advanced action. So we have some worker bumpage going on here. So this one gets bumped down, this one gets bumped down, this one gets bumped off. Now I could bring it back to my landing area without increasing it if I wanted to, but I don't mind increasing it. The reason why I would want to do that is if I had a retrieval to do a lot of farms, but I don't have a lot of farms, so I don't need to worry about that right now. So it's going back to my active pool at a level three this time. But now the AI is going to choose to take a bunch of tiles. See, it gets actually one of each tile. So that's actually a lot of points. I think that's six points total. And then these three here will get removed and then we'll slide everything down here and we'll uh, restock the market. All right, then for my action, I think I am going to use this card. So I just discard this card to use the ability. I can increase one of my workers. I'm gonna increase this one to a four. And then I'm gonna use this to go to the convert action here. So now I get to teach a dance. And so I am gonna do the dance of the future and I think we're gonna do it for honey. So we'll add that there. And that lets me spend one point per honey that I wanna gain. But again, for making a dance, I gain four queen's favor. So it bumps this up to eight. And now I have four different conversions that I can do. And so three of the conversions are gonna be honey. I'm gonna convert three times. Well, that's a really tough choice, but I think I'm gonna go with it. I'll gain three honey. That costs me three points. I hope it's worth it in the end, but we'll add these here. I have three slots for them. And then for my last conversion, I think I will take this card, discard it to draw a new card because that ability wasn't the greatest. And so now this one says I can pay a resource to place a second worker so I can take two turns basically. All right, so now it's the AI's turn and they are going to look for yellows. They only have one. So they're gonna retrieve all their yellows and increase. Now this one is a level four and it's gonna hibernate. And so when it hibernates, of course, it's gonna choose between these two and it's gonna choose this one this time again because this one's worth the most points at this moment if it was scored. Now this worker dies, but when an AI worker dies, it goes straight back to the faction board according to this strength here shown in, on the little token here. So this becomes a level three worker for the AI. So that's actually really good for them. And then they're gonna gain two points for that. And so now it's my turn. And so I have to retrieve as well. And I'm gonna end up hibernating as well. So this one's gonna die off. And let's see, where do I wanna put my hibernation token? I think I'm gonna place it here and gain one fiber. And we'll add the fiber over here. But these other workers are coming back, adding a strength to each one of them. And so I have a good uh, set of workers for this next round. But with three workers, I get to activate three farms. I only have two farms, so only two get to activate. And so I will gain three queen's favor from one of them. 
And then this other one here, I will gain a wax, but I don't have any room for any wax. So unfortunately that's gonna get discarded, but I'll gain one queen's favor for that. All right, so now it's the AI's turn. They're looking to use gray. They have more than enough to use it um, and no level fours. So they're gonna move on to research, placing one of these level threes in research and they'll gain three points for that. Moving on up to 15 points. Now it's my turn. I'm gonna take this level four worker and go to carve while I have the chance. I'm gonna carve for this one. Again, this one gives you three points for each adjacent tile, including faction tiles. And then I'm gonna place it right in this spot right here. Now it's gonna cost me all three honey, but I also gain a level one worker. Uh, since one of my workers died off earlier, that really helped. Now it's the AI's turn. And uh, let's see, they're looking at yellow workers. They don't have zero, so they're gonna move on. They don't have a level four. They're going on to convert. So they'll go here and they're gonna gain another three points, pushing them up to 18 now. All right, and so my, for my next action, I'm gonna use the explore action. I'm using my level one worker because I only wanna move one space down to gain this tile here. We'll flip it over. It's only gonna gain me a couple of resources. Might as well put a water there. I also gain a uh, fiber. So I gain one fiber and one water. Gives me some resources to work with. Now it's the AI's turn. And uh, let's see, they're gonna look for yellow again, zero or one. They have one, so they're gonna retrieve their other yellow worker, making it a level four worker and moving up two points to 20. Now it's down to its last card. When it's down to its last card, you're actually gonna shuffle everything on their next turn. But until then, it's my turn now. And so for my next action, I'm gonna take my level three worker going up here, and then I'm gonna buy this recruit here. It only costs uh, one pollen. I get that discounted from my diplomat, and I'm gonna place it up here. Now this particular tile says, whenever you build a tile adjacent to me, gain one pollen, so that's gonna help later. But I also gain a seed card from the bonus underneath uh, where I placed it there, so we gain a card. Now this uh, card says the worker you place this turn acts as if it has plus two strength and strength five or more is okay. That is really good. I'm gonna need that for the next turn. And now it's the AI's turn. So we'll shuffle the deck and we'll get started. All right, and so we draw the AI's card and they're looking for zero gray workers, but they have one. It's a level three, so skipping on down. They're doing the grow action and they're gonna grow, gaining a total of three points. Man, they're moving up that track real fast. All right, so now it's my turn. And let's see, what I wanna do here is I wanna use this level two worker, but I'm gonna use this card, making it act like a level four worker. And I'm gonna go to the grow action, bumping off the AI's worker. This becomes a level four now, but I get to use the four action, so I get to upgrade my uh, tile here. I'll do that in a moment, but first I want to use the action. I want to spend all four strength on here, buying two faction mats, and then I have to spend two resources for each. I have four resources here total, so that works. And then I get to gain those two faction mats. And let's see, where do I want to place them? I think I'll place one here and then one right here. And now I get to upgrade my faction tile, so I just flip this over, and once again, this one says I get two points per uh, recruit in my colony, and those are the blue tiles. So right now, that's worth eight points. Now it's the AI's turn, and they are looking at yellow. They're gonna do the carve action. So they're gonna be bumping uh, my level four worker here. So this worker gets bumped and killed off, or dies off. I get to use the hibernate action. And I think this time I will go here gaining a wax. I think the wax is gonna be helpful for me. So adding that here. Now the AI is gonna carve two using the S curve starting from the bottom right here. And it'll count two tiles. So one, two, and it's gonna take this one here, adding it to its supply. And now it's my turn and I don't have any workers, so I'm gonna have to retrieve. And so all three of these are coming back to my active pool. I will have one level four worker for the next round, which is kind of nice. And I get to activate both of my farms because I have more than enough workers. So I'm gonna gain one more wax, very cool. And then I'm going to gain three queen's favor bringing me up to the 14 spot, which is actually worth seven points at the end. Now it's the AI's turn and they're looking at yellow. They're gonna retrieve their yellow, bringing this one back. This one's gonna die, they're gonna hibernate. And so they're looking to gain the most points as if scored right now. So if they place here, then they're tied and that's worth three points at the end of the game if a tie was to happen. So again, they place it 
and determine as if they're scoring right then. So that's worth three points. If they place over here, they would have majority. That's worth three points. That being tied, they're choosing the five slot here. So they'll place it in this slot here. So this worker dies off, but then they gain a new worker. And once again, a gained worker is the strength shown here on the little tile at the bottom. And so it's gonna be a level three worker. Now, one thing to note, the AI covered up uh, one of these icons that says to refresh the developments, but it actually doesn't do that. The AI ignores those uh, symbols. And the last thing here, the AI gains two points from that retrieve. So they're moving on up. They have 25 points. All right, and so for my next action, I'm gonna use my level two worker. Going right here, buying a recruit, buying this one here. I can choose any of these from the column because the strength is high enough. And uh, this one cost me nothing because of my discount. And so I'm gonna place this one and let's see, we will place it right here. Actually, I'll place it in this top spot here and you're not gonna really see it, but it's gonna gain me another seed card. Well, you know, actually I should probably place it right here just to get it next to my carving here to earn an extra three points at the end of the game. And uh, it gains me a pollen from that bonus there. So that's nice. But on top of that, this now augments my explorer action. So anytime I use the explorer, I gain an extra uh, resource. Now it's the AI's turn and they are going to look at yellows here. And let's see, moving on down the list to explore. They're gonna explore over here with a movement of three. They're using the S curve, so they're gonna be moving down into the, the right. So we turn this around. So now that it's looking this way, it's gonna move down, looping down with the S curve. So one, two, it's at the end, turning around, three. So it lands right there. It's gonna add a resource to one of those empty spaces. So now it's adding a water. I keep forgetting to uh, <laughs> refresh my tiles here. Sorry about that. All right, so now it's my turn. I'm using my level four worker to go to the explorer. And so what it gives me is I get to use the level four ability shown on one of those explore actions. So it's a tough choice to choose between the two, but I think I will choose, well, oh, it's a really tough choice. I think I'll choose this one here. So we'll go over here. So one, two, three. I will gain a pollen from that, adding it to my supply. And then this bonus on this particular planet says gain one level one worker and plant, plant one card. So I can plant this card here. This one here just says straight up four points at the end of the game. So we'll plant it here. And then I'll gain a level one worker to my pool. Now it's the AI's turn. And uh, they're looking at gray workers. They wanna retrieve if there's zero. Moving on down to the advanced action. So they're gonna place this level four worker here, bumping everything down. This one gets killed and hibernated and they get a new level three worker. Their hibernation is gonna place them right here, taking majority in the five area. But now let's do the action. They're gonna gain one of each tile since they placed a level four worker there. And then these three tiles here get discarded and we'll refill everything. Now I did forget to gain my free uh, resource from the explore action earlier. And so we'll just have gained a fiber. All right, so now I'm gonna use a level one worker in the advanced action, bumping everything down. This one gets powered up to a three, and then I'm going to buy a tile, and I'm gonna buy this one here. This one's cool, exchange. Build any two recruits for free, any face-up ones. And so I, this only cost me one uh, wax, that's really nice. And I'll place this tile right here, which will gain me a seed card from that placement bonus. So there we go. And then I get to, uh, build any two of the recruits. We, again, we don't refresh till the end of the turn here. So I will build this one and this one here. And I'm basically choosing these uh, because of their point value. Now, of course, this one actually helps with the advance action, discounting it by one wax. So that's actually kind of nice as well. But now when I place these, I think I'm gonna place them right here so I can fill out this particular uh, frame. Again, when you fill out a frame, it's worth eight points at the end of the game. So that was a good gain. On top of that, I gained another seed card from that placement. And on top of that, those are blue tiles worth two points each at the end of the game because of my upgraded faction ability. So there was some really good stuff there. All right, so now we'll reset these and we'll move on to the AI's turn. So now we flip over the AI's card and they're looking at yellow. If they have zero or one, they only have one yellow. So they're gonna retrieve their yellow worker 
making it a level four now. All right, so now I'm gonna place a worker out. I'll place this level three one out here, bumping the gray level four. And so it hibernates. Of course, this becomes a th level three worker, but they're gonna hibernate, taking this top spot here in this level uh, three area here. And once again, the game ends when the hibernation areas have been filled up and each player has had one turn more. And so for my next move, I'm gonna place this worker here, bumping these down. Of course, mine increases to a level two. And then I'm going to buy one of those farms. I'll buy this farm here, which only costs one fiber. And so that's what I'll pay. And then I'll add this farm. Let's see, I think I'll add it right here. That's gonna gain me one pollen from this and one point from this. So that's kind of nice. But then I have this card here. I can play this card at the end of my turn after I've done my action. It says pay three pollen to gain one of the uh, recruits. So we'll do that. We'll pay the three pollen and then we'll gain this recruit in the middle here, adding it to the space here, which will gain another seed card, adding it to my hand. Now, of course, we need to replace tiles here and we'll move on to the AI's turn. The game is almost over. <laughs> We're at the very end here. Now the AI goes and they are going to look at yellow workers. Now they don't have zero yellow workers, so moving on, they're gonna carve one. So they're gonna place their level four here and carve one following the S curve here, showing the tail here in the upper left. So they're gonna start with this one here. They're only carving one, so one, they're taking this tile here. All right, so now I'm gonna recall my workers. So this level four one will be killed off and I'll hibernate off of that. These two become level four workers. And so then I will gain a hibernation token and I'm gonna place it right here gaining two points, but I have two workers returning to the active pool, which means I will be able to trigger the income. Now, one thing to note, I already had a worker here, but that one doesn't count as a retrieval for income. so I don't get to use it. So I have two workers and three different farms. And uh, unfortunately that means I'm, I'm only gonna get to use two of those farms. Now, which ones do I wanna use? I think, yeah, I think I'm just gonna use the ones that give Queen's favor. I get two there and three there. So that's a total of five. And we're moving on up here. That was actually a five point gain. So it was definitely worth it. Now it's the AI's turn. And it uh, looks like they're gonna use gray workers and we'll use this one here. They're going on to research. So bumping their other worker, making it a level four, bringing it back to the dock here. And they're gonna gain three points off of that, moving on up to 28 points. Now I'm gonna go to the research action using my level four worker, bumping their gray worker, making that a level four. And then what I get to do is I get to draw four cards and then let's see what we get. So this one lets me pay wax to gain a uh, development. I don't need that. This one increases strength. Don't need that. This one's pay. Uh, well, I don't need more workers. This one's activate two different farm abilities. That could actually be worth some points. So I'm going to gain this card here. But then uh, since I use a level four worker in the research, I get to plant one of these cards. And I think I'll plant this one here. It says gain five points if your faction is upgraded. Well, it is. So I'll slot it in right here. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to use this one here and activate two different uh, farms. Actually, I just noticed it says two different income abilities on the face up farms on the board. This is the board. That's the hive. So it's only those there. So I don't know that I need to actually use this card. So I'm gonna wait on that. Now it's the AI's turn. And uh, it looks like they're using gray and they're gonna carve two. All right, so placing a level four worker here, bumping this one. And uh, this is gonna trigger the end game. So this worker gets killed off and becomes a level three worker. They're gonna place a hibernation token here. And then unfortunately, that means that they're gonna take one of these tiles here. They're carving two, starting from here. So one, and then two, they'll take this one here. And so now that all the hibernation is filled up, we each get one more turn. So this is really crucial here, what I choose. And really, I think the best thing for me to do is, uh, yeah, the best thing for me to do, I, I think, <laughs> I don't know for sure, but I'm gonna go here and, and then I'm gonna spend my one remaining uh, wax here to gain this card and place it right up here. And what that does is it fills up that frame. And so I'll gain eight points from that placement plus one for that tile. So that's not too bad. So we'll move this over and refill, not that it needs to be. And now it's the AI's turn, their final turn of the game. 
they're looking at gray workers carving again i don't even need to place the worker they're going to take the last tile that is really unfortunate all right and so here we are at the end of the game and now we're going to go into end game scoring and so for the end game scoring you're going to use the chart on the back of the autumn uh, uh, rule book to do the ai scoring but you can also use their faction mat it's really straightforward so you're going to count up their tiles and their points for each one farms give one recruits give two developments give three carvings give seven explore tokens give three each and then they'll get uh, points for majorities in the hunting comb all right so or the hibernation comb and so they have both majorities there so that's 10 points right away so they're moving up to 38 now they have so many carvings this is uh, five carvings at seven points each that's 35 points so they're going to move from 38 to 73 that is ridiculous and 73 is right here <laughs> and then uh, for their tiles here uh, again one each for the farms two each for the the blue ones and then three each for these so they have a total of 12 points here plus another six points for these two tokens here so another 18 points wow that's a lot of points they're going to bring them up to uh, 91 points all right and i'm down at four <laughs> let's, let's see how this goes so once again we use uh, the little player aid here to determine how many points we get first we're looking at filling hive mat and frames eight points each now i have my hive mat filled and i have two frames filled so that's a total of 24 points not too shabby so we're moving on up to 28 now then we're looking at all my tiles and looking at the point values on the left side of each tile so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve i suppose i could have got some more points out of that but that's okay so i'm at 40 now now we're looking at conditions for my built uh carving i only have one carving and this gives three points per adjacent tile including faction tiles we have one two three four five so that's going to be 15 points bringing me up to 55 now and then conditions met on my planted cards i have both those conditions met adding another nine points to that bringing me up to 64. My position on the Queen's Favor track, which gives me a total of 12 points. All right, so we're moving on up 76, we're almost there. I don't have any of the majority, so I don't get points there, but I do get the, the two points left over from <laughs> second place. So now I'm at 78, so it's all gonna come down to this faction tile. This is how close it gets. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. 16 on my 78 goes to, oh man 94 points how about that how about that and so there you have it that was my tutorial and solo playthrough of apiary by connie vogelman and stonemeyer games but let me know in the comments below what you thought of this game also point out any rules errors i may have made please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here and i thank you very much for joining me on tabletop for one have a great night